Hey guys and welcome to the video. Today part two of Hacking Modding Monday News and Info. Part one was yesterday. I'll put a link down in the description in case you missed it. Today we are going to focus on the Nintendo systems, primarily the Switch and a little bit on the 3DS and that's about it. But a lot going on with the Switch. Anyway, for those of you who are new to these segments, you can look down in the description for a brief summary. But just to go over it very quickly, I basically go over anything that I think the viewers or subscribers to the channel would find helpful, useful, informative, or just entertaining in the world of hacking, modding, homebrew, and pirate scenes. Anything that's geared primarily for the end user that has gone down over the past week. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into it with the Switch. Okay guys, and I'm going to start off with the Switch scene and this, another update to the Switch's firmware. Now before I continue, I actually didn't notice that the firmware had updated till literally just right now. So I pretty much finished the video. I'm going to record this and just place it at the front at the beginning. The good thing is here with this latest 10.0.3 update is that the developer of Atmosphere said that it did not affect Atmosphere at all, which means that Atmosphere will continue to work just fine, as well as Hecate and pretty much all the homebrews should continue to work as well. So that's good. Not too much to worry about with this update. All right, guys, so we will begin things today with the switch and something that I touched base on yesterday. So I won't spend too much time on it here. And that is Citra for the switch. Now, this is a 3DS emulator. Uh, apparently, though, it hasn't been released to the public, but it is something that is being worked on. As you can see here, this is the Twitter of the actual developer. And uh, you can see that it actually looks pretty good so far. He does state that it's very rough, though, lots of bugs, lots of issues that need to be worked out. But nonetheless, it is something that is being worked on. So that's a plus. And hey, the more emulation, the better. And for me, this is actually something that I'm excited about. I have a modded Switch and I love my system. And if we can get to the point where we can play 3DS games on it, even better still. Can't wait to see where this goes and how fast it gets there. Next is Joy-Con Droid. This is an app that's a little bit different, quirky, but may have some usefulness. What it does is that when you install it into your smartphone, you can actually use that smartphone as either a left Joy-Con, a right Joy-Con, or even a pro controller. It will sync up with your Switch via Bluetooth, and then you can use it as a left or right Joy-Con or pro controller. So I can see this having some practicality for sure. However, it seems that you do need a device that has at least Android Pi, which is Android Android 9 or higher, you need to make sure that your device has a Bluetooth HID profile. And just in case you're not too sure, they provide you with a link here so you can check it out to see if your device comes with that. It has over 3000 reviews. It's sitting at a 3.7, which isn't too bad. Some people have had really bad luck with it. It doesn't seem to work at all. And some people say it's great. Of course, I'm sure this depends on your device and how things are set up. Anyway, if you want to give it a try, it's totally free. It does contain some ads and some in-app purchases. And moving on, we come to Moonlight and X, and this is a way for you to stream your PC games to your Switch. For those of you that have a modded system and want to try this out, you can come here and read the instructions. The controls are listed here and everything else. When you come to the releases, you'll notice that over the past couple of days, there's actually been a few releases and updates starting two days ago with version 1.0.4 and then a couple more releases that bring us to yesterday's release that fixes some issues with the stream starting. And now this is on version 1.0.6. The .nro file and everything you need are in the zip and everything seems pretty straightforward to set up and start using it. And continuing with the switch, we have a couple more updates to some homebrew starting with SysDVR. And this is basically the exact opposite of what we just covered. This one allows you to stream games from your switch to your PC, either via USB cable 
or wirelessly. Now there are some limitations. The most notable one is that the quality of the video is fixed to 720p at 30 frames. If you have not used this before, it's pretty easy to set up. The files that you need for your PC and your Switch are over at the releases. And then here we have JKSV, which I've covered before. This is a data game save type manager tool, similar to Edison and Checkpoint. But this one has a couple of extra features. One of the ones that stand out is the ability to remove downloaded firmware updates from the NAND. So if you connected your Switch online and you accidentally downloaded the, uh, the next firmware update, but it didn't install and you keep getting the message asking you, do you want to install that update that's sitting there? You can remove that update. This will not allow you to remove the last installed update. It just removes the one that's sitting there that was downloaded ready to be installed. And I think that alone may make it appealing to a lot of people. Plus, it doesn't matter how many of these game save managers you have installed in your system. So I think it'd be worth it just for that because it's fairly easy to do. You can check out a lot of the improvements and fixes and additions and things that were done in this latest update that came out a few days ago. And then you can grab your NRO file from right here if you are updating all you need to do is just copy and paste this latest nro file right over your existing one okay and next i'm going to cover a couple of things that i'm really excited about and you guys should be too for those of you out there who use or used cosmos because we seem to have a couple of like clones that have surfaced starting with this one void nx and this is definitely the one that I'm leaning to and the one that at least right now I'm recommending a little bit more, but wait till we get to the other one. Anyway, Void NX is the most similar and Cosmos-esque of the two. It's set up basically the same way. There are a few minor changes here and there. You can read what those are in the features, but it uses the current atmosphere. It boots up the same way. It comes with a bunch of great homebrew. Of course, you can delete any of these homebrews you don't want to use, uninstall them. You can install later on all the homebrews you want. It comes with some popular uh, payloads just like Cosmos did, including Hecate that, you know, you can boot into Hecate and then launch into Cosmos from there. And then it comes with some PC tools as well. There's a bunch of information here. Anyway, it, it's just, it almost seems identical to Cosmos. But what I like is that it includes SIG patches as well. We'll see how long that lasts. So there's no fumbling with any of that stuff. And it works on all firmware even up to current 10.0.2. Now, the way you would install this is a little bit different. You come here to clone or download, click on the download zip. When the zip downloads, you're pretty much gonna copy and paste everything, which is what you see right here, to the roots of your SD card. There are a couple of things that you don't need. You may not need the license. You don't need the readme file in there. And normally I put these payloads like the lockpick and the Tegra, I put into just a folder called payloads. And then if I need to use them, I direct Hecate to that payloads folder and then launch them from there just to keep everything nice and neat. I leave Hecate on the root though, because my dongle requires me to rename it payload.bin and then that's how it launches. Anyway, it's, um, it's really up to you how you set that up, but this is by far the most Cosmos-esque one of the two and the fact that it has the SIG patches and all that stuff just makes it even better. All right, guys, so the second one we are gonna look at is Multifruit AIO, which is an all-in-one. Now, this one you can kind of think of as a Cosmos Lite. It's very similar to Cosmos and Void NX, but the main difference is that it just comes with fewer homebrews. So this one here has Atmosphere, the latest one, the latest Hecate. So you would boot into Hecate and then launch Atmosphere just like you would in Cosmos. But there's only a bare essential amount of homebrews here. So you get Gold Leaf, the App Store, the homebrew menu, 
and the homebrew loader. But of course, you can add as many more homebrews as you want. Now, one key note here is that this does not include the SIG patches. You will have to add them yourself. Now, the SIG patches are needed so you can play your backed up game files. If you're a little bit confused about that, because there was a lot of confusion going on a couple of weeks prior to Cosmos going away when 10.0 firmware came out, the SIG patches situation had changed and, and was changing practically every couple of days. So right before Cosmos went away, a few days before that, I actually did a video that showed you which SIG patches you needed, why you should use those, and how to install them, and you know it'll make your life 100% easier. So if you want to follow that video, you can, and you can do the exact same thing that I show people what to do for Cosmos, you would do it here. Get those same SIG patches and put them in the exact same place, and you'll be good to go and if for some reason your game still have an issue launching your backed up ones in that video i even give you a recommendation on what to do to get your games working again so here if you're going to use this just grab the zip file copy and paste the contents to your root of your sd card and that's it you'll be good to go and naturally you need to get the sig patches if you need them so the good thing here is that we now have two very solid great alternatives to cosmos each one comes with atmosphere and hecate so you get all of those features and all of those options it's just one is more of a lighter package that only comes with a few homebrews while the other void and next comes with all the bells and whistles and all of those extra homebrews choose the one you want from either one of these great alternatives to cosmos and now we head on over to the 3ds scene where there's been a couple of updates starting first with the twilight menu something i've covered a bunch of times it's an emulator type deal that allows you to play roms from various nintendo and sega systems when you go over to the releases you can see here that they made a couple of bug fixes and then grab your 7-zip file from there. Next we head on over to our friends at Logic Sunrise. By the way, this site is in French, so you'll have to use like Google Translate. There's a couple of things here. First, an update to 3D Sync. Now, 3D Sync, what it allows you to do is you can upload your backed up game saves from like Checkpoint and even JKSM up to Dropbox. Now they just added JKSM support. This is similar to the JKSV that we just reviewed a little while ago in the Switch, but it's for 3DS. The next thing is an update to PS1 Forwarder Creator. This is interesting because it allows you to create an independent RetroArch SIA file from your PS1 backed up game. So you can turn that PS1 into a SIA file so that it installs right on your home screen and then you could just launch it from there and it will have all the files needed in order for it to function and run which is pretty interesting anyway you can check out the last couple of change logs and what they've done and then grab the download here and by the way the download for the 3d sync is located a little bit above right there and that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, of course, the best way to do that, as always, is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone. Be careful out there. Be safe, but have fun. And we will see you on the next one.